Right. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, Simon. It's really an excellent group of people and, a, and an exciting crowd. And as Gordon, I think, has already mentioned, it's an excellent turnout um, of road information management engineers. I think it's an exciting time to be one of those. It's a, probably <clears throat> not many people would expect you to be able to say that in a sentence, but I think it's true. I think it's a very exciting time to be a, in, in the field that we are. We've had the Auckland transport changes, which, which significantly changed, um, I think, how we, how we do things, certainly for a large um, <clears throat> proportion of the market. I think NZTA, obviously, with the MNO, the MNO changes that NZTA are proposing, um, and also what's happening in Australia, they're looking to move to some innovative uh, contracts for them in the maintenance space. Certainly, probably things we're familiar with here, but certainly new for Australia. Um, so, there's some exciting times. I know for our team, and what's going on has had some um, big changes for us. We've probably nearly doubled our team in the last 18 months and probably just about need to do that again. So I think it's some, some really exciting times ahead. What I'm talking about is the measuring and monitoring confidence in your M database. This is a project we did with, with Auckland Transport. They requested that we have a look at with them just how, what confidence they've got in their, their database. They've got, I'll just give you a bit of a, a history around Auckland Transport, most of you will be aware, but they are a council controlled organisation within the Auckland Council, the super city. They're obviously a fairly significant organisation, but to, to give you some scale, they've got $9 billion worth of roading assets, of assets rather. They spend $300 million a year approximately on their maintenance. If you compare that to NZTA's sort of 400 million for the entire state highway network, it's, it's, there's, they've got a significant budget. They've got about 28,000 treatment lengths and about 7,500 kilometres worth of, of road network. So they've got a big network. So what was the problem? The problem was when they were formed, they were a new organisation. They had new people going into new roles. They had seven databases from seven different authorities as well as the regional authority all come together. If they were lucky, they had one person that was familiar with those networks. That was the network they were involved with before they came into Auckland Transport. They basically had no idea of what was in their RAM database. They had real no idea of where the strengths and where the weaknesses were. They had no real idea of where the gaps were. They had seven local authorities who managed their RAM databases differently. They had different protocols. They had different standards and they were interested in different assets. Um, for instance, some would rate footpaths, some wouldn't. So a whole range of different issues coming together as an organisation. So they really wanted to get a handle on what, what's in our database, where are our strengths, where are our weaknesses, where can we say, yeah, I'm confident with that, and where can we say, yeah, I'm not sure we've got all that data. Um, obviously in such a large organiser, a large network and a large range of assets, they wanted something that they could do that relatively high level and relatively quickly. So the objective was to create a repeatable mechanism for reporting the health of the data in the RAM database. So they want it repeatable, they wanted it to be able to monitor progress as they established improvement actions. They wanted it to establish the current condition and then a benchmark from there in which they could monitor improvement. When we looked at the principles, it was going to be based around just what sound asset management decision making, what information you'd need for that. They wanted the objective, they wanted the index to be objective rather than subjective. They wanted it to be repeatable. It wasn't getting someone's opinion each time on what they thought where things were at. It needed to be a repeatable mechanism that just gave an answer. They wanted it to be modular. Um, mainly through a big focus of that was around just the, the nature of their network. A lot of the, the data, the the legacy areas for the different councils all manage their own RAM databases in their own way. So any, strength, any gaps in data tended to be based around those um, legacy council databases. And yet Auckland Transport was operating within, um, they had a whole different range of different areas. They had south, central and north. Um, they had their wards that were different to the old legacy council areas. So we needed to be able to drill down across the network, across the different contract areas and even down into really the legacy areas as well, certainly to start off with to find out where the gaps and strengths were. It needed to be simple, 
It needed to act as a shadow for good asset management and database management practice, and it also needed to reflect the asset management policies and the vision of Auckland Transport. So some of those things were around, um, for instance, rating footpaths. Some councils hadn't done that. We're aware of it. That was fine. But obviously, over the next um, three years, as that cycle came in, then by the end of that three-year period, all, this, all the rating of footpaths would be done, and so you could monitor that, monitor that progress. So it needed to reflect their vision of how they were going forward as well, with realising that, yeah, it wouldn't be up to scratch, but at least you'd be able to find out those areas where they still had some work to do. So what did it look like? We broke it up into three areas. We had a, a pavement and footpath assets, where we looked at surfacings, pavements, footpaths and treatment links. We had what we called collected data, so that was looking at, um, for instance, the condition rating data for footpaths and roads, maintenance cost data, traffic data, um, things where we were actually going out onto the network and collecting things. And then we looked at what we called non-carriageway assets, so that was like the other main asset groups, as bridges, drainage, um, service water channel, signs and, and street light. It's not all the assets that they have, but it was really looking at the main ones. Um, and again, it was trying to keep it simple and reasonably high level and looking at where they spent the most of their money. We used a confidence grading system in terms of you'll see the traffic light sort of model that we used um, coming out when I show you the results of, of some of the things that we did. But we, we basically graded on the one to five system to give an idea. Although we actually calculated a number, we actually put that in a range so we could put it in a, give you a, a range of where you sat with terms of the one, one to five grading system. And you'll see how that's applied shortly. So this is what we came up with. It's probably a little bit hard to read. You can see the colours and, and the numbers there. The colours are around that grading system. The green was where we'd set a target. We said we'd want, for instance, the first line there around surfacings. The percentage of the network that had been surfaced that was in the database in the last year. So had been re had they been resurfacing enough of the network and was it actually in the RAM database? So, for example, we took a target, I think it was about 8 or 10%, I can't remember the exact figure, was around, that's what you'd want to see in your database if you're looking after your network, and it can be adjusted depending on the network that you had. So that we called that a grade, you'd want to be at a grade one. So that would be the target. The measure, as you can see in the orange there, was a grade two, so they were just under that 8% area there at 7.6% for this network. So you can start seeing how we started building that up. We looked at different things such as um, where surfacings were older than the expected age. We looked at um, where there were errors in the data such as um, missing surface dates or we looked at activities within the, net the network, so looking at things around um, yeah, how much activity was recorded in RAM, was it all out of date or had, had things been updated regularly. We looked at benchmarking how much of an asset you would expect to find in there. So for footpaths, for example, um, we would have an expected length of, say, footpath per kilometre in an urban network, and we'd benchmark that against what was in the database. So we could have an idea of a high level as, well, do, do we think they've got all the footpath data in there? For things like treatment lengths, you know, do we have how much of a proportion are very long and very short? How many are updated in the last five years? The proportion of treatment lengths that had more than 80% um, coverage of the top surface. So just little measures just to give us an idea of how well things were looked after, how much confidence we could place in that thing. And so you can see we had a, a range of targets. We put those into a number in terms of a percentage, mainly so we could track them. The numbers in themselves are a little bit meaningless, but they're just relative to each other. If you're an 82 now and you're an 84 um, next, next quarter or next year, you know that we've got a bit more maintenance cost data in there and such, and we can track them. But we tried to keep the colours around the targets to keep it reasonably high level so you can see where the holes are. So this was the one for the footpaths and pavements. Probably just a couple of thanks too. The, this, this generally comes out as an A3 single page output and that was down to really Kevin Dunn and the work he did to make it, I think it's come out with a really good output and, and Donna Nicholson did a lot of work around these SQLs to come out with this data. The, the measures look reasonably straightforward but there's actually quite a lot of tricks in the, in the back trying to get this SQL data to come out with a, with a reasonable and consistent um, number. So there's a lot of work in the background coming out with what is a reasonably comprehensive and, and, and straightforward report. 
So this is looking at collected data, again, mainly looking at these benchmarking and how many assets we had in there. Um, oh, so, yeah, sorry, collected data. So looking at are we meeting policy, how often are they rating their roads, when were they last rated, how are we getting maintenance cost activity coming through, are our traffic count estimates, are they all estimates, are they all defaults, looking at both mix and volume, and how old are our estimates, and, and looking at various tests like that to give us a feel. For, and you can see the red and the orange and the, and the green around um, how we're performing and really highlighting that the issues came to serve as a flag for really things you might want to look in in a bit more detail. Why aren't we getting any maintenance cost data? Is it just that little bit that gets stuck from the contractor flowing through to um, into RAM or is it a more fundamental problem than that? It's really just a, a guide to go in and have a look at a few more things and, and find out where the issues are or what the issues are. This last one was around um, looking at the other assets. So again, this is where we did a lot of the benchmarking, so how many street lights would you expect in an urban network? Again, some of the renewal activity, how often are the signs being updated or what proportion of them have been updated in the last year? Um, and examples like that. So it comes down to a, um, a reasonably comprehensive feel of, of where your gaps are, and we could look at that for a Manukau or a North Shore or a, or a Rodney, we could look at that in the South or the Central or the North, or we could look at that over the whole, over the whole network. How we implemented that, that's been, it's run annually with a full report, um, looking at things in a bit more detail and looking in a bit of background as to some of the areas of concern or where things have changed in the last year. We run it quarterly as just a bit of the A3 coloured sheet, um, just to monitor just seeing what's happening and, and keep Auckland Transport up to date. The modular results have been good, certainly to start with where a lot of the issues are, are, are legacy council based as opposed to a contract area or how Auckland Transport might organise their network. So being able to say, look, you know, you, your footpaths in South are, um, aren't, or your streetlights aren't very good uh, records, but it's actually that problem's really strict in Manukau, you don't have to worry about running around Franklin and Papagura trying to track them down, it's a, it's a Manukau issue um, and things like that. So the modular um, results really helps. It allows a targeted improvement plan. From this result we can quickly organise where we want to focus our activities in terms of getting improvements. Um, and it also, to a lesser extent, tracks effectiveness on, on how we're sp spending our money and that we can actually track the improvements and see where well, we are spending this money, are the changes coming through. That's really it. Any, uh, I think at the end of any good roading presentation we should show a picture of a train, um, that's important. But I think it's good to acknowledge the input of, of Auckland Transport and, um, and the work we did with them and their, and their keenness to do this and that's really thanks to Virun Sharma and, and Ano and their teams are being keen to, to work with us on us and it's been, it's been a really neat little project. Thank you.